This is what you guys have been waiting for. This is the new Chad Tuner muzzle brake. Uh, what I've got in my hands here, this is the fourth generation prototype. Uh, this is what I've been running at matches and this internally is exactly the same as the fifth generation, which is also the production version. Um, and that's what everyone will be getting. So I'll put that up on the screen and you'll be able to see that with some overlays uh, during the course of the video. But yeah, I just thought I'd show the generation four prototype, uh, which is pretty sweet. And then we've got the third generation prototype as well, uh, which was really cool. Um, you can see all the, the really thick laser welding on the stainless body, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, what is it? It's essentially a whole bunch of individually machined pieces, which are then fitted together and then laser welded into one single assembly, uh, same way you make a tubeless silencer. So the reason we did this uh, it pretty much it gives me total freedom on the inside to create whatever internal geometry I want. Um, a, a typical conventional design, you're getting a, a rod of material and you are machining it from the outside with tooling, trying to create the geometry inside that you want uh, from the outside. That's incredibly limiting and restrictive in terms of what you can do. Um, hence the TMB with the inserts, how we took the inserts and that geometry outside of the muzzle brake made that and then put it in. Um, same sort of concept, but this is just far more practical and streamlined. Um, and yeah, it just results in a, a far better product and a far more durable product as well because the TMB really can't handle like a 338 Norma and stuff like that, but this, this will handle anything. Um, this is very thick. 304 stainless, uh, that's CNC laser welded. Um, yeah, it's as strong as just having a rod of material and just machining into it, like a, a normal conventional muzzle brake. So why did we come up with the Chad uh, when the TMB is so good? And why did we come up with this new way to manufacture brakes? Well, this is essentially the response to the industry just copying the TMB and everyone just pretending like they came up with the idea themselves. Um, I didn't want to focus on a negative or stagnant strategy uh, back at the start of 2022. Um, I wanted to focus on something that was forward thinking, moving on and positive. And this is the result of that. Um, I had all these crazy designs and geometry that I wanted to manufacture but I just couldn't do it by conventional methods. Um, so I had to come up with a new way to do it. And what inspired me was the way they make tubeless silencers with you know, multiple small pieces that you would then fit together and then laser weld into you know, one unit. Um, and that has allowed us to do things that you just simply can't do otherwise. Um, and it gives you performance that's just not accessible otherwise. So typically with a muzzle brake, um, there's three characteristics that you would measure it via. That's recoil control, muzzle rise control, and blast and shooter. So all designs on the market currently have compromises and pretty much all of them focus on one thing in particular and just try to be as good as they can at that one thing. Uh, because with you know conventional manufacturing methods, you're very limited with what you can do on the inside of it and that limits what you can effectively focus on and be good at with a design. Uh, however, doing it this way, this allows you to focus on um, individually all of the things that are important and without the negative consequences that you would normally have uh, with conventional style designs. So um, I'm not gonna go into specifics anymore how I do things or why. Um, you know, with the TMB, I would go very much into specifics on how the gas flows and all that kind of thing. Uh, but because, you know, people just blindly copy um, and I need to protect myself, uh, every aspect of this is patent pending. Um, and I'll talk about those things when patents are granted. Uh, but until then, um, I will just generalize and talk with diagrams to explain things, uh, but I won't go into exact specifics anymore as to 
how um, and why um, it performs the way it does, unfortunately. So the first thing that inspired me with the design was uh, surface area and the width of the muzzle brake. Um, so the ideal width for a 30 cal muzzle brake is five inches wide, which is absolutely ridiculous. That's wider than this is uh, in that direction. And it would be enormous and unwieldy and just stupid. Um, however, um, once you do the maths and you sort of figure out uh, the point of diminishing returns, you don't need to go quite that crazy to achieve significant performance boosts over a, a typical one to 1.1 inch muzzle brake. Um, so yeah, what we ended up settling on was 1.25 inches. That gives you a big performance boost and a massive amount of surface area over something like you know the TMB, which is only one inch in diameter, yet it outperforms you know much larger diameter muzzle brakes. Um, so yeah, extra surface area, that gives you extra performance. Um, the 1.25 inches was settled on so that straight barrels like the ones that I run um, and that seem to be getting popular lately, um, it's just streamlined and it just blends in completely. But it also looks good still on uh, like a really heavy contour barrel, something like a proof comp contour or a VCC uh, from Benchmark. Uh, the, the jam nut tapers down to one inch. Um, so yeah, if you've got a one inch at the muzzle, um, contour it blends in it and it looks it looks nice it looks streamlined it's very industrial um, it's not as outrageous uh, like the TMB with the massive tuner um, and yeah you won't have to worry about people making penis memes about your brakes so um, but yeah it looks great um, and the, the gen 5 version which everyone's getting looks even better than this the second big thing I really wanted to focus on was the tuner um, and the location of the tuner Unfortunately, having the brake 1.25 inches, then having a tuner on top of that uh, would make it significantly bigger than the one on the TMB, um, and I didn't want to do that. Uh, a lot of people, like I said, have been doing straight barrels lately as well, so there's a lot of complaints um, from people that want a forward of the shoulder muzzle brake, uh, that nothing overhangs the barrel, so they don't have to cut the barrel um, to, to fit the muzzle brake. So uh, reluctantly, um, I moved the tuner to the other end of the muzzle brake. Um, it, it does in the end perform just as well. I do prefer it at the muzzle, um, but yeah, I, I didn't want it on the end like this. Uh, this was just for the prototype so I could work out the, the right size, um, weight and everything for the design and the thread pitches and all that kind of stuff um, and the amount of adjustments. Um, so yeah, I put it inside the muzzle brake uh, which you'll see on the Gen 5, uh, so that the tuner is completely protected. Uh, it's streamlined with the muzzle brake. It doesn't look weird or anything, um, but it's still locking like the TMB. So it's got a single set screw. Uh, it's got 24 adjustments per rotation, and it's got two rotations of adjustment, and the tuner weighs two ounces. So yeah, it works really well. Um, and yeah, you don't have any of the, the negative um, fitment issues or the negative looks or you know practicality moving it in and out and around barricades and hitting it on things uh, it, yeah it just makes it a, a little bit more practical uh, and durable obviously because it's inside the muzzle brake. The next big focus uh, was the biggest complaint everyone has about the TMB which is the sheer amount of blast that just smacks you in the face uh, it's a lot of pressure hitting you um, you know, you're doing something where you're concentrating, uh, your eyes are important, and then having all that pressure in your eyes while you're trying to focus on what you're doing and see, you know, a, a tiny six millimeter bullet hit something, you know, 500 yards away. Uh, yeah, I, I understand the complaints. I get it. Uh, blast doesn't really affect me that much anymore. You know, I do have brain damage now, so <laughs> it is what it is. Um, um, yeah, I'm foggy most days, so. Yeah, but it does affect some people and I get that. Um, so that was a big thing with the Chad. Uh, the first generation of the Chad I built in 2022 at the start of the, the PRS season in Australia. I ran that pretty much all year. Um, and yeah, the focus of that was to reduce blast, but somehow at the same time, increase the performance over the TMB. Um, 
so yeah it went through a few iterations uh, but it wasn't until I got to America started shooting American matches and I was specifically at the lead farm shooting off these hay bales that I came to the realization that really catapulted the development of this further and it turned into essentially what it is now um, I was shooting off this hay bale and obviously I've got a TMB the blast is all coming back in my face which is fine normally um, but when you're on hay bales then it's picking up all these small bits of hay and just blasting hay into your face I couldn't really see anything it was awful I get hay fever normally and then just that just yeah it was just so much worse I couldn't see and I was like this is bullshit I'm not doing this again how can I avoid that in the future and how can I stop this from happening to my customers because I don't really like the idea of that happening to people either so um, I came up with the idea of okay let's stop trying to focus on reducing the amount of blast um, or you know working with a, a horizontal blast design which I was at the time the, the idea was increase the blast as much as possible make the performance as crazy as possible just direct the blast away from the shooter so that you know particles of stuff isn't blowing in your face for one and then two you aren't getting the blast and the concussion either um, so what i settled with and came up with was um, direct the blast up and over your head um, so that it wasn't coming in your face but it was still there and then at the same time it was combating muzzle rise um, so yeah that was important because if you can convert the entire jet effect from the muzzle brake coming rearward which counters a significant amount of recoil and if you can direct that whole thing upwards on an angle um, then you get a significant amount of muzzle rise reduction and the muzzle brake just holds the front of the rifle just flat it holds it with authority like it's different from any um, experience of any muzzle brake or muzzle device you've shot before um, and you really need to shoot the chat to experience it um, and you really need to adjust your rifle and your technique a little bit when you start shooting the chat because you know typical technique you got your hand on the on the side of the rifle on your bag at the same time and you're holding the front of the, the, the rifle down you don't really need to do that with the chat because it's going to do it, it's going to do it for you so really you're either you know adopting like a free recoil technique where you're just holding the rifle and letting it track rearward in a you know in a very flat manner and then it, you know sort of either kissing your, your chest or just starting to kiss your chest or you're gonna you know tighten up on it and really you know suck it in and then just hold it tightly but just don't hold it down um, and then just manage you know the wobble from the you know the recoil you know jolting your body um, and yeah either of those techniques works really well um, you, you may have to adjust the balance on your rifle you, you know you don't need it to be front biased uh, to counter the the muzzle rise because like I said it's gonna hold it down for you um, so yeah it's a very cool and very unique experience that I think people are really gonna like um, and you know people that are typically getting around two mils of muzzle rise um, you guys are the ones that are going to benefit from it a lot because you'll be finding that you know once you balance your rifle right and you get your technique right it just dances around the reticle just inside the target like or just on the outsides of the target like it, it essentially just you know, combats all muzzle rise when you get the technique right and you don't even need to be on a solid prop or a solid barricade or in the prone for that to happen um, in the videos that I'll show you shooting standing off a tripod it's wobbly you see the wobble in the you know in the the scope cam footage the trigger cam and um, yeah despite that we're not you know skyrocketing with the muzzle rise and getting four mils and all that kind of thing uh, it's just dancing around the inside and the outside of the target when you're shooting it um, and yeah it's it's pretty awesome whereas the other muzzle brakes pretty much all of them uh, you know you're getting around two mils of muzzle rise which is going to if, if you really take your time and you're in like a wobbly situation like that that's that's pretty consistent with what you'd expect from you know some really well uh, controlled shots 
Uh, the TMB, you're getting about half to one mil, which is a bit easier, a bit nicer. Um, but then, yeah, this is just significantly less again. So, yeah, it's a, it's a cool experience to not get blasted in the face, uh, have that much recoil reduction, and have it keep um, the muzzle flat for you. But yeah, like I said, um, you may just have to adjust your weights a bit, just adjust your technique a bit. Uh, but once you get it right, it's uh, yeah, it's really bloody awesome. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to just start shooting it and just you know experience the benefits um, that this unique style of muzzle brakes you know can provide. So let's get onto the footage. Um, this video is very different to the, the ones I've done previously where they're very like data and results focused. Um, I, I think I've proven that I can make the, you know, the best muzzle brake in terms of recoil reduction. I have my you know, very fancy sensor now. Um, and with that, uh, we will be doing you know, muzzle brake comparison videos in the future. So I don't wanna sort of you know, steal that and inject it into this, this video. Uh, I'll put up results of the Chad versus uh, you know, uh, the Fat Bastard to see how much less recoil it does have. Um, and we did some DB testing as well, uh, two days back to back, and the rankings of all the muzzle brakes were pretty much the same. Um, we did have some issues with that test, but uh, I'm still pretty confident after shooting them all. Uh, you, you can feel the, the amount of blast that they all have, and it seems to show on the DB readings as well even though I'm not that versed with the, you know, with the, the meter, but you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, it, it's pretty easy to shoot them all and go, that has less, that has more. The TMB is just like someone slapping me in the face. You know, it's, it's pretty obvious. Um, but yeah, I wanna focus on this video, what it's actually like to shoot it, because that's the most important thing. Um, results are cool, data's cool. Um, but yeah, actually shooting it is, you know, essentially at the end of the day what's the most important so um, I'll be shooting off a tripod uh, with a bag on it I'll be shooting the, the Fat Bastard, the Ace, Hellfire Match, uh, the TMB and the Chad. Um, the reason why we chose those muzzle brakes uh, you know the, the TMB, the Fat Bastard they're pretty much the same category you've got the Hellfire Match that's in the middle and then you got the ace that's like the low blast type of design um, so yeah in their respective categories they're the, the best brakes in their categories those four are the most popular in the PRS scene um, and yeah if, if you want a low blast break the ace is the one to get it's the best one the hellfire match if you want something that you know is a good blend of the two that's pretty much the best one and if you want outright recoil control, you get a TMB. If for whatever reason you don't like a TMB, you get a fat bastard. You know, they're the, they're the four brakes to get. So that's why we're comparing them and then shooting the Chad. Um, so the rifle that we're using is just my competition rifle. It's a 24 inch 6GT with a, a barrel blank from Bartline. Uh, it's chambered by Garrett at Priest Precision, who's awesome. We love Garrett. Um, it's in an MDT ACC Elite. It's got a Z comp on it, spur mount, you know, Bix and Andy, Tax Sport Pro trigger. Um, yeah, just a, a solid, good competition rifle. Um, it's 24 pounds and it balances four and three quarter inches in front of the magwell. Um, we're shooting uphill off the tripod. Uh, at a target that's what six inches wide at 450 yards um, so yeah uh, let's get into that footage and see what it's like to shoot it compare it to the other ones and yeah you, you can just see pretty easily um, how different it is and how flat it keeps the front of the rifle and it just just kills the muzzle rise for you it's really cool
so yeah the footage pretty much speaks for itself you know don't really need to get in too much depth with that like i said you know they're all about two mils a muzzle rise um the ace break had the most amount of recoil but you know it's still surprisingly quite easy to control um, the hellfire match uh you know again very similar fat bastard very similar but just less recoil um tmb least amount of recoil out of those brakes um you know a bit of muzzle rise but not much you know the tmb wasn't really designed to keep the muzzle flat it was just a gentle push um and then there's the chad least amount of recoil but the star of the show really is just it just holds the muzzle flat it just holds it down for you um and yeah you, you really don't need to push hard or push at all um to, to eliminate the muzzle rise for you. If you sit there and you push it as hard as you can, like you would with another muzzle brake, you, you'll be getting negative muzzle rise, which you know, it's, it's just the same as muzzle rise. So yeah, there's no point in doing that. Um, but yeah, once you shoot it, put 20, 40 rounds through it, you'll figure it out and you'll, you know, you'll find the balance um, and how to run it best. Uh, but yeah, pretty much these are gonna go up for pre-order in four weeks. That's when all the, the parts will be finished being manufactured. Um, and then it's only three weeks to get them welded and coated. Um, so yeah, from now on, we're not gonna do pre-orders until the parts are actually manufactured so that there's no way to have major delays. You know, the parts are finished. They just need to be welded, which only takes a week. Uh, they, they need to be coated, which only takes a week. And then we've got a week for postage and delays. So. Uh, yeah, hopefully that solves that issue. Um, and yeah, on the website, it's going to be very, uh, very blatantly obvious that it is a pre-order. It's not in stock. Um, you know, that's just how it is. It's very difficult to have a company, but it is a good problem to have at the same time where you go to make products and it takes, you know, eight weeks start to finish to make them and they sell out before you've made them all. Um, you know, it's a good problem to have, but at the same time, it's unfortunate that you know people are waiting that long for the product, but it, it just is what it is. So I just need to negate that as much as possible. Um, you know, people beg me to be able to pre-order, so okay, we'll let pre-orders happen, but it'll be right at the end uh, when they just need to be welded up and coated, and then that should hopefully satisfy everyone as much as possible. But we can't make everyone happy, but um, hopefully, you know, shooting the chat makes you happy enough uh, to uh, yeah, forget about um, what's happened in the past. But yeah, we're definitely, you know, I feel like we're definitely doing the right thing by you guys with the new product. Uh, I put as much work as I possibly can into it to, to make the best product I can for you. Um, and yeah, I just really hope you guys love it. Um, all of this, the specs and all of the, the details are on the website. Uh, there's a whole bunch of cool photos and everything. Um, the Morgan King version is titanium nitride with a ceramic blast, so it's that matte gold color. It comes with a raw brass tuner, and then it comes with the uh, black hard coat type three anodized uh, 7075 aluminium jam nut. Um, yeah, the construction of the muzzle brake is three or four stainless, um, and then we'll have at the same time a launch edition. Um, this will not be uh, the, the colorways and everything that we'll do in the future for the you know just the standard production versions but yeah the uh, the launch edition will be raw stainless uh, with the raw welds you know so you get that really cool um, exaggerated weld look um, and then it will come with the brass tuna and the black aluminium jam as well so um, yeah the launch edition the stainless is 515 the Morgan Kings uh, there's still some of them left because obviously we did have a few people pull out naturally. That's fine. Um, yeah, those will be 545. Um, but yeah, so it should be about seven weeks um, until they're shipping. Um, yeah, jump on the website for any of the details. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of content on the chat over the next four weeks before we put them up for order, obviously. Um, we'll do some on the, the new style tuner. We'll do some on, you know, how to set up your, your rifle and the different techniques you can use to, to work with the Chad rather than work against it. Like I was saying, you know, adjust your technique and everything. Um, but yeah, lots of content coming. Uh, hope you guys are excited. I'm very excited. It performs awesome. 
um, yeah, I'm looking forward to running it at the next match and just, uh, yeah, just being able to see everything because it's awesome. See ya.